إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إذا أراد الله بعبد خيرا استعمله He said عليه الصلاة والسلام that if Allah wanted good for someone he employs them or uses them in another version of it طهره he purifies him in yet another version of it, asala means he sweetens him. They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, and what does that mean? He said he guides him to do something good, and then he takes his soul while he's doing it. He facilitates that that person whom Allah wants something good for them that before their death they do something good and then Allah Azza wa Jal takes their soul they dial while they're doing that thing and if you were to wonder why that is important the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said يُبْعَثُ الْمَرْءُ عَلَى مَا مَاتَ عَلَيْهِ a person will be brought back to life upon the thing that he died doing. He will be brought back to life. Doing back, meaning on the day of judgment, resurrected. Doing the thing that he was doing when he died. So if he was among the righteous, doing righteousness, that's how he'll be resurrected in that company with that deed. And if he is among the wicked, the sinful, doing a sin, that's how he dies or she dies. They'll be resurrected in that company, doing that thing. Once a man at the time of Rasulullah while they are in Hajj, he fell off his camel, broke his neck, and he died. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, wash his body, shroud it, put the kafan on, don't put any perfume, don't cover his head, because he will be resurrected on the day of judgment, mulabbiya, reciting the takbir of hajj. The way that he died, he'll be resurrected like that. So how you live, and most importantly, how you die determines how you will be brought back to life. And he also said, alayhi salatu was salam, innama al-a'malu bi khawatimiha aw bil khawatim. Deeds are by their conclusion. Meaning, whether they are to be accepted by Allah or rejected. Whether the deeds of a human being are sound or corrupt. Right or wrong? What determines all of this? He says the end of it. The end of it. Just like a person who's running a race. What matters is that finish line. If you stop before the finish line, then you're not in the race anymore. A person who is fasting, if they break his, their fast, an hour before Maghrib, they're not fasting anymore. So what determines the outcome is the end. And that is the most important part. 
And it's most important because not everybody manages to die righteously. And it is a most difficult of times because at that point, we are our weakest and the shaitan is the strongest. At that time, when you know that you're, gonna, you're about to pass, leave, and you're physically your weakest, and emotionally you're panicking, and psychologically you're under stress, unlike any stress that you have witnessed before. So you are your weakest at that point. And whatever you love comes to the surface. Whatever you rely on comes to the surface. So you are weak and you're trying to grab on the things that you used to depend on. If it were Allah Azza wa Jal, then you'll remember Allah. If it were something else, then you'll remember something else. And at that point, as I said, the shaitan is the strongest. Because he knows that if he is able to trap you and misguide you then, then you're over. And if you escape him and you're strong at that moment, then you've won. And that is when a person needs support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah confirms those who believe with a firm belief in the dunya and in the akhirah. And they said among that confirmation in the dunya in addition to any other time when you're alive and you're unsure, you're confused and Allah Azza wa Jal guides you and guide your heart to the truth when you're your weakest before death, Allah confirms Iman in your heart so that you will die as a believer. It's a gift from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, but it's also based on what we do. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Those who have Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they walk the straight path. Then the angels will keep descending upon them, giving them the good news of don't be afraid or sad. We are your allies in the dunya and in the akhirah. We will support you. And some of the scholars have said that the believer when he sees the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal just before his death, that will confirm Iman in his heart. And that will protect him from the whispers and the play of the shaitan. So the angels will descend. And if a person is worthy of confirmation, they will confirm him. And to that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Man ahabba liqa Allahi ahabba Allahu liqa'ah. Wa man kariha liqa Allahi kariha Allahu liqa'ah. He says, if someone loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah would love to meet him. And if a person hates to meet Allah, Allah will hate to meet him. So they said, oh Prophet of Allah, all of us hate death. He said, that's not it. But when someone is about to die and he receives the angels of Allah Azza wa Jal and they give him the good news of what is to come, he loves to meet Allah. And so Allah loves to meet him. And when the disbeliever or the hypocrite receives the angels of Allah and they give him news of the punishment that awaits him, he hates to meet Allah and so Allah hates to meet him. And because of the fragility of that time, and the fragility of the human being. We need to worry about that time as well. Part of the dua of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O you Allah, the turner of the hearts, the changer of the hearts, establish, confirm my heart upon your faith, upon your religion. 
They said, O Messenger of Allah, how often do you make that dua? How often do you use that in your oath? He said, Indeed, because there is no human heart except that it is between two fingers of the finger of the Most Merciful. And he turns it as he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning your heart is not yours, but it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have iman now, there is no guarantee that you will have it later. So any believer, even if you are, or you think you are, the best of the best, and if you look at yourself and you say, MashaAllah, I fast and I pray and I've memorized the Quran and I give sadaqah and this and this and this. But when you know that at the end of time, at the end of your life, your soul could betray you and your sins can catch up with you, you will never admire what you're doing. You will never admire what you're doing because you know that all of it could go away if the end is not right. And subhanAllah, there was once a man at the time of Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam, one of those battles. And he was courageously fighting alongside the Muslims. Until some of the Muslims have said, no one today fought better than so and so. No one protected, protected us today more than so and so. And yet Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam said, innahu min ahli nar. He is of the people of hellfire. So some Muslims have said, if he is in hellfire, who among us will be in heaven? This is how excellent he was. And how his deeds appeared. So one of the Sahabas said, I'll monitor this man to know and confirm the statement of the Prophet. ﷺ. So he watched him, he was close by as he was fighting, and he was injured, that man. And he panicked because of his injury. So he killed himself. And so he rushed back to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, I testify that you are a Prophet of Allah. He said, what happened? He said, I watched what he was doing and he eventually, he killed himself and committed suicide. And then to that he said, ﷺ, indeed, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَعْمَلُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فِي مَا يَبْدُوا لِلنَّاسِ حَتَّى مَا يَبْقَى بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعَ فَيَعْمَلُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلَهَا He says, a man would continue to do the deeds of the people of heaven. As far as people can see, he said, alayhi salatu was salam. Until there is only a hand span between him and Jannah, and then he switches and he does the deeds of the people of hellfire and he enters hellfire. And a man would do the deeds of the people of hellfire as far as people could see. And then before, there's only a hand span between him and hellfire, he switches and he does the deeds of the people of heaven and he enters heaven. Now tell me after listening to this hadith, could you feel secure in what you're doing? Or could you lose hope that Allah Azza wa could guide you or guide anyone? You could do the best, but something internally is missing. And so eventually you switch to the actions of the people of hellfire and you enter hellfire. So you know that I cannot rely on my salah. I have to pray. I can't simply rely on my zakah. I have to give zakah. But I plead with Allah Azza wa Jalla, Muqallib al Qulubi, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik. Keep my heart strong as a believer. So I do not waver before death. And if you are a person who has done much to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you know someone who has done much to, to the same effect, never despair of Allah's mercy because you never know Allah could change the fortunes of that person for whatever things they have done or dua that they have received. And they will do the right thing just before their death and they will go to heaven. Sufyan with Thawri, Rahimahullah, he used to cry. And they said, 
or they asked him once, he says, are you crying because of, you're afraid of your sins? He says, it's not sins that I worry about. It's what's going to happen to me right before my death. Sins, I know that Allah Azza wa can forgive. But what is my state before my death? That's what I worry about. Because whatever you do right now could surface right before your death. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, was beside someone who's dying. And he said, Say la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. And the person would refuse, refuse, refuse. And eventually he said, I disbelieve in this. And they died. So he asked about him. And he, they said, Kana mudmina khamr. He was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic, addicted to alcohol. So there are certain sins, unless forgiven, unless there is something else to counter them, they will surface at that time and per may prevent a person from saying the very thing that could save them. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from that. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه من السماوات ومن الأرض ومن ما شئت من شيء بعد وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى had given us some signs that someone's end may have been a good one. And we don't conclude with certainty that that's the case, but it does give us hope or probabilities. So among them, and most important among them, is من كان آخر كلامه لا إله إلا الله دخل الجنة. He said, عليه الصلاة والسلام, the ones whose last statement is لا إله إلا الله he shall enter Jannah. And that is, of course, is not available to anyone and everyone who wishes to have that. At that point, the shaitan stands between you and what, what you want to say and what you want to do. And if you just consider, and this is really an important point, if you consider how the shaitan now, while we are healthy and powerful and wealthy, stands between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and manages to win, Consider how much power he will have when we are our weakest and he is our, the, his strongest. So in order to be able to say that on the day when you want to die or when you're about to die, you have to live it, you have to feel it, you have to practice it. So if one says, La ilaha illallah, then that is a good sign. And it is sunnah to remind people who are dying to repeat it until that be the last thing that they say. Also, if someone dies while sweating, he said, alayhi salatu was salam, yamutu al-mu'minu bi'araqi al-jabeen. He says, the believer dies while his forehead is sweating. One of the salaf, just before his death, he said, I remind you of three things. The taqwa of Allah, and watch Allah when you're alone. The things that you do while you're alone matter. And the third thing is look at my conclusion, my death. I lived 61 years. It's as if I did not see much of this world. Then he said, look at my forehead. Am I sweating? They said, yes, you're sweating. He said, that is a good sign. He said, alayhi salatu was salam, that the believer would die while sweating. Another good sign is that the person would die Friday night or Friday day. يوم الجمعة أو ليلة الجمعة Because he said عليه الصلاة والسلام that a person who dies ليلة الجمعة أو يوم الجمعة will be protected from 
the fitna of the grave. Another one is that a person would die in Medina. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that if anyone among you can die in Medina, let them die in Medina because I will intercede for those who will die in Medina. Another one is for a person to die with shahada, with martyrdom, to be a shaheed. Whether that is fighting for Allah's sake and he is killed, or he is on his way and he is killed, or he is being stationed in battle and he is killed, all of that the shaheed is protected from the fitna of the grave. And maybe we can include in it other categories of shahada that the Prophet ﷺ added. Because he said والسلام, among the categories, those who die drowning or in a fire or under the rubble or because of an illness in their stomach or a woman who is giving birth or because of it, all of these people are shuhada. So perhaps those can be included as well. And when you look at Muslims dying in these ways, you we say to yourself as much as we hate that this would happen to anyone, at the same time, this could be shahada for them and they may be honored because of it. So it's good on one side, bad on the other. And maybe we can add to it, the one who truly wants to be a martyr and asks Allah for it sincerely, maybe Allah Azza Jal will include him in that category. Wallahu a'lam. And of course, what we said, a person who does something good and they die while doing it. Why would a person receive a good end? They would receive it because of their iman, because of their habitual ta'a, obedience, because of their dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they remember death, because they fear it, because they work for it, because they are frightened by what could be at their end of their life. So they are eager to do good as much as they can, because they don't know when they're going to die. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not die except as Muslims, and since you don't know when, then you do what you're supposed to do all the time in case that's the time when you are going to die. So you rush and you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do good and they make dua and they receive good dua, and they never despair of Allah's mercy. And those who receive the opposite are those who have wrong beliefs, shaky beliefs. They don't really believe in Allah and His Prophet. Or they are so immersed in the dunya, so immersed in the haram, that that is what has overtaken their hearts. So when you are about to die, you remember the ones and the things that you love the most. You cannot pretend. You cannot claim what is not true. You are panicking, you are holding on to dear life and you'll remember the things that matter to you. So if a person loved the haram, the haram will come to their mind and to their heart. Nothing else can compete. If they are used to it, that's the thing that will surface. But if they were obedient to Allah, the obedience of Allah will come to their rescue. And if they used to remember Allah a lot, the remembrance of Allah will come naturally to their tongue. And if their bodies used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll find it easier to continue the worship of Allah. Finally, I want to share with you a story that I heard from someone. And there's benefit in it, but also we need to properly understand it. Someone, one of those days, he had a dream was going to Umrah and in the dream he saw somebody tell him take your no neighbor to Umrah with you don't say that this is just a dream take your neighbor with you to Umrah he wakes up he says to himself this is just a dream I'm not really close to my neighbor he sleeps again he sees the same exact dream take your neighbor with you to Umrah this is not a dream take him he wakes up. 
He goes to a dream interpreter. He said, this is what I'm seeing twice so far. What is the interpretation? He says, what is the apparent meaning? You're being asked to take your neighbor to Umrah. See if you see it a third time. If you see it a third time, do it. He sleeps a third time, sees the exact same dream. And so he decides, I'm going to go to my neighbor, who I really am not close to. And he's not religious. So he knocks on the door. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as salam. Can I come in? Yes. And he said, I'm going to Umrah and I want to take you with me. And he said, me? He said, yes. He said, but I'm not religious. He says, it doesn't matter. He says, I don't pray. I don't even know how to pray. He says, I'll teach you. He says, I don't even know how to make wudu. He says, I'll teach you. So he says, I taught him step by step how to make wudu. Step by step how to pray. Then we traveled to Umrah. And he said, when we were in Mecca, you could see that that affected him. His heart started to open. So while we are in our hotel, he would say, I need to go to the haram. Why? I want to spend more time there because of all the bad things that I've done in my life. I want to compensate, make up for lost years. So he would go spend some time, then come back, go spend some time and come back. One of those days he goes and he's late. He doesn't come. So they started to look for him. And to their surprise, they found him dead in the haram in the position of sujood. So they contacted the family and they said, please wash the body and bury him in Mecca. That's what we want for him. But the man still had questions. Why did he see that dream? So he went to his wife and he asked her, he says, I, you know why I took him to Umrah? I saw this dream and now he's dead. And that is a beautiful death. Why did he die that way? Why did I see that dream? He said, I'll tell you why. As you know, my husband is not religious. He did not pray. He did not do this or that. But he had a nice heart. And one of the things that he used to do that people did not know about him is that there was an elderly lady. And he used to take care of her. He will take a portion of his salary buy her whatever she needs every single month and he was doing this for a very long time he alone was taking care of her and whenever he would do this she will tell him i cannot repay you but the only thing i can say may allah give you a good end the only dua i can give you and she says that's the only dua that she will give to him may allah give you a good khatima she said because of this that's what you saw. Now when we look or we hear these stories and they happen in front of us, you understand Allah's great mercy. You could do so many terrible things and Allah like this could save you. So you never despair of yourself or people around you. But it also should teach you that you should do something good in your life. It doesn't matter how sinful, how far away you are from Allah Azza wa By the way, don't say, I will not pray, I will not fast, I will, and then just rely on that somehow miraculously this will happen to me too. There are many people who will go to hell because they did not pray and did not fast and disobeyed Allah Azza wa But what you should take from that story is do some hidden good deeds between you and Allah Azza wa No one knows about them. Be sincere. And believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the most forgiving and most merciful. So we ask Allah Rabbil Alameen, Arham al Rahimeen, to give us Husn al Khatima and to protect us from the evil Khatima. We ask us Rabbil Alameen to make us steadfast upon this faith, to fill our hearts with Iman and Ikhlas. We ask Him, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to forgive us all of our sins, especially the stubborn ones that keep coming back to us. Ya Rabbil Alameen, forgive us our addiction to sin. Give us power against the sins that have ruined our lives and have, have overtaken them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Give us power against the whispers of the shaitan. Give us power against the plots of the shaitan. Make our, make our death a good death, Ya Arham al-Rahimeen. And our 
your resurrection a good resurrection, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ya Allah, include us all and our loved ones in your mercy because it's all encompassing. Include us all, Ya Rabbal Alameen, in your forgiveness because it's all encompassing. We ask you, Ya Rabbal Alameen, to send down your protection upon the Muslims, upon the people in Gaza, upon the people of Palestine. Bring your relief upon all Muslims in Sudan and in India and the rest of the world, Ya Arham al Rahimeen. اللهم نسألك حسن الخاتمة ونعوذ بك من شرها اللهم نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك الخير كله عاجل عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونسألك من خير ما سألك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أنزل فرجك على المسلمين رب العالمين اللهم أنزل فرجك على أهل غزة وفلسطين وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم اجعل لهم فرجا قريبا اللهم اجعل لهم فرجا قريبا اللهم اجعل لهم فرج قريبا اللهم احمهم وانصرهم على عدوهم رب العالمين وأتي عدوهم من حيث لا يحتسبون اللهم إنا نجعلك في نحورهم ونعوذ بك من شرورهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين واقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استقيموا تراسوا يرحمني وإياكم الله straighten your lines and close the gaps الله أكبر سبحانك اللهم بحمدك تبارك اسمك تعالى جدك من آيك أمين أعوذ بالله السميع الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترهن الجحيم ثم لترهنها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله 
أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده أنا لك الحمد صلوات في الأرض الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله نعم عليك السلام عليك السلام تبارك الله تبارك الله إخواني بليس إذا أنت بلوكين أول بليس ريموف يور كار إخواني بليس ريسبكت دي نيبر إلى خير هذا السيد درسك على احترامه يلا بلوغرين اخواني ان شاء الله فيري امبورتنت حلقه توداي افتر مخرب الشيخ علي ان شاء الله سو يو اند يور فاميلي جوين حلقه ان شاء الله اخواني وحا جري دون الدوره العلميه ايا بلا من دون تسنين بعد العصر شي عبد الغني او كتابك تحفه الاطفال يا جزريه مركا قفكي ربا علوم القران انو حبرتو دوره دان لبدا بلودها كفا اذا استرنتي وحس عندهم تلاو بلود تسنين تام بلا من 